stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Birds singing in a sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me. Hello my fellow YouTubers and subscribers and welcome to my latest movie review where today I review Inception directed by Christopher Nolan who uh, has got a new film coming out. Yes, Tenet. That's a new release. Finally. At last we are getting a new release during this pandemic. Um, so I thought to myself I'm going to go back and review a couple of other Nolan movies in preparation for Tenet. I had previously reviewed the Dark Knight trilogy in collaboration with other YouTubers and Dunkirk as well, I've reviewed that movie. And I recently put up a review of Interstellar as well, so I've reviewed a few Nolan movies, but um, I wanted to review Inception. This is a movie that I want to, I've wanted to talk about for some time. Also, because Inception is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Woo! Celebrate, celebrate! And actually, I was lucky enough to go and watch this movie on the big screen. Yeah, so I went to the cinema to see this film, even though I think I actually own the movie on DVD, but it was worth the experience. This is a film that needs to be seen on the big screen, so if you get a chance, go to your local cinema, because I think they'll be showing Inception in honour of its anniversary. So, uh, yeah, it's not to be missed. Anyway, what is the plot of Inception? Well, it's sort of a bit complicated, so you'll have to bear with me. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the plot description off IMDb, because that will be easier. A thief who steals corporate secrets through the use of dream-sharing technology is given the inverse task of planting an idea into the mind of a CEO. And that's basically it. But there's also some emotional drama surrounding the main character known as Cobbs and his wife, who we think is dead but may not be dead. <laughs> that's all I'll say. If I go any further, I will get confused. Because, and that's the thing with Inception. This movie is phenomenal. I love Inception. It is a fantastic film. But the subject matter is very exposition heavy. There's a lot to explain in terms of the dream technology and how they actually operate this sort of stuff. And it can be a bit hard to follow at times. Not that that's too much of a criticism, but I think a, a, a casual viewer may find this film sort of confusing and a bit boring, um, which is fair enough. I actually really like this film. I mean, the first time I saw it, I saw it uh, a few years back, and I wasn't too into it. I, w I kind of enjoyed it, but I was I was a bit confused by it. But watched it. I watched it again, and then I got it a bit more. I'm watching it now. Wow, <laughs> this movie is phenomenal. I mean, the very idea of it is very clever. The use of like dream technology and 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 you know going within dreams, within dreams, within dreams, and creating you know a world essentially of your own, and the whole, like, it's, it's basically going into the psych of what a dream is, and, and the architecture of dreams, and I think that's a very clever idea, and I think Christopher Nolan really has thought of something quite, quite exceptional here, I mean, I, I don't know many other films like this, it's really quite subversive and interesting, I mean, the cast of this movie are really good as well, Leonardo DiCaprio is sensational as Cobb, the main character, He's got a lot riding on him. He's got a lot of secrets that he hasn't divulged with his team yet. Um, and I like his emotional drama with his wife, Mal, played by Marion Cotillard. And the two of them really have genuine chemistry when they're on screen together. And I love the explanation behind what happens to her. I'm not going to go into it because it will just confuse me. But uh, I'll let you watch it. You know, In Inception is one of those movies. You have to see it to really get it. So... I think me explaining it will just go, will just be going in circles. So <laughs> I'll, I'll explain the basis of it, but I'm not going to go into super details with this review. So just watch Inception, please, just watch it. But as for um, Cobb and his wife, yeah, there's a lot of emotional drama there. And the reasons as to why she is the way she is, is partly to do with him, shall we say. He has kind of uh, planted something, planted an idea in her mind. And basically, he's inadvertently caused her own despair, which I think is a very emotional um, 
part of the plot. And I think um, that's what I like about this idea that Christopher Nolan, he hasn't compromised for the emotional story. You know, he keeps the main character's emotional journey central to the arc of the film. And that, you know, in a way, it's, you know, it, it kind of makes us think twice about Cobb as a character. We, we, we get a new perspective on him. We think, oh, okay, maybe he's not so good after all maybe he is good but there are various and again there are various moral dilemmas and various reasons as to why he's done what he's done and why she is the way she is but you don't really side with one or the other there's there is there is a sort of conflict and the movie puts you in that emotional position like you're supposed to be conflicted with these two characters you're supposed to not feel so much sympathy for him or for her you're meant to kind of feel at odds with both of them and i think that's the genius of this is that He's, he's, Nolan has created these amazing character dilemmas, and I think they're really good. That being said, not all the characters are perfect. That would be my one criticism about Inception, is that I think some of the characters are just very bland. Not a lot of them have much personality. I mean, obviously there are some that do, but like Tom Hardy's character, Eames, he doesn't, he, like, who is he? Like, we just, we get introduced to him and we don't really know who he is. Like, there's not much time given to him. And also, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Arthur. He's not really that interesting either, which is a real shame. The performances are fine. It's just the writing of the characters. Some of them are just a bit, meh, like very one note. It's not a major criticism. It doesn't take away from the sheer magnificence that is, that is this movie. But it really, it would have been nice to have those characters a bit more fleshed out. That's all I'll say. I really like Ellen Page's character, Ariadne. And I think she is is a great character. Not, not just because she is like this junior architect who... Is, is basically, she's at a university, and she gets um, hired by Cobb to design dreams for him. She realizes that he is actually keeping secrets from the other team, and she is actually the first person to find out what he is keeping from the others. And I think that's really interesting in how she's, she's kind of at odds with trusting him or not as well. So th there's a lot of tensions between the characters, which I really do, I really do like. The climax of this film is enthralling. I mean, once you have a general gist of the concept of this movie, you're able to kind of invest in it. And, like, they, they go literally within dream upon dream upon dream. It's really good. It is really thrilling. It is really tense. I mean, Christopher Nolan's direction is perfect. And for some reason, you're actually able to follow it. You know, you're actually able to realize, okay, they're in a dream. This is the first dream. This is the second dream. This is the third dream. And then when they go back to reality and, and they're on the plane, you realize like, oh yeah, that's where they started. They were on the plane. <laughs> that was kind of my thing, feeling. I was like, oh, I totally forgot that they were actually on the plane to begin with. And they, had, they did all of this in 10 hours. It was really clever. Really, really clever. The action sequences are very thrilling as well. I really do like them. Although, again, one other tiny nitpick I have with this film, the camera work. Some of the camera work during the action sequences is very shaky. There's some, there's a lot of shaky cam going on, and I find that a bit distracting. So I think Nolan could have tightened up his uh, camera work a bit, and it's, it's a bit too hard to follow at points. Even on the big screen, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> it's, it's a little bit weird, but there's plenty of action to keep you entertained. And this movie is very long. It's two and a half hours long. But it doesn't feel like it. It flies by. The pacing is perfect. I think it's a lot better paced than Interstellar was. Even though I do really like Interstellar. That movie is a bit slower. I think Inception benefits from a quick pace. It is, it is a thrilling movie. It's a it's basically a sci-fi thriller. That's, that's what it is. But there's a lot of emotion to it as well. I love the idea as well of them all having a little object called a totem. In which tells them whether you know they're in a dream or not. Or whether, whether things are going well in reality or in within a dream like um i'm not explaining it very well but Cobb has this little thing this little spinning device that he uses which he took from his wife and he constantly spins that to to work out how stable things are i think the opening as well is really good how it, it actually starts at the end of the film and then it obviously flips back later on and I also like the character of Ken Watanabe, his character. I mean, his character doesn't really do much in the second half of the film, but we, we think at first he is the, the antagonist of the story, but he's kind of making a deal with them, and he ends up getting lost in kind of like a limbo state. It's hard to explain, just watch the movie, but it's, it's really good the way the narrative kind of flips around. I also like Killian Murphy in this film. I think his performance is great. He plays Fisher, who is the, the son of this of this businessman who dies and he has an access code 
that they need to get into a safe because they need some information. And basically, Cobb uses a dream to manipulate him into giving them the information. So there's a lot... Um, you have to really pay attention with this film, otherwise you're going to get confused. It is hard to keep up with, but when you're in the moment, you're, you know, it, it is really good. And the visual effects are incredible. I mean, this movie won, like, four Oscars, so I'm not surprised. The visual effects are mind-bendingly good. And it all looks so real. I mean, Christopher Nolan is not really a big fan of CGI. He will use it where he has to, but he, he prefers practical effects, and I appreciate that. But on this occasion, because of the nature of the story and the dream sequences you kind of need the CGI. Um, and it all looks really good, and it hasn't dated in 10 years. I'm, I'm amazed how well it hasn't dated. And on the big screen, wow. I mean, I didn't get to see this movie on the big screen the first time around when it came out in 2010. So I'm really glad that um, I got to see it this time. And yeah, that's my review of Inception. I think it's a, 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 an amazing movie. I have a couple of nitpicks. Like I said, some of the shaky camera work is a bit bothersome. And also, some of the characters could have used a bit more development, but... There are any minor gripes, I am still going to score Inception a 10 out of 10. I think it's one of Christopher Nolan's greatest achievements. This might actually be my second favourite Christopher Nolan movie, Behind the Dark Knight. I would go that far. It's really good. If you haven't seen it, give it a shot. But you just have to pay attention to it, because it it's very it's very exposition heavy and it's very complicated. Anyway, thank you very much all for watching this review, and stay tuned when I review Tenet. Uh, I booked my ticket, so I'm going to watch Tenet next week. So until next time, thank you very much, and see you soon. Bye for now.